wide. Wow. Oh, a bit wide there. Whew. Just caught it, but I tell you what, I can feel enough of coming through the wheel to <laughs> to know that I needed to catch it. Welcome, welcome back to ECTV again. I'm going to test out the CSL Elite. This has been my mainstay wheelbase for, I think, probably about eight or nine months now. It's been absolutely fantastic. I've loved every second with it. It's taken me a little bit of time to kind of get to, to a point where I'm really happy with kind of the feel and, and the control in the car and the like. My main game that I play is uh, of course Composite City, which you've probably seen on the channel as well. If you haven't, please do subscribe and click the notification bell as well for my weekly streams that I do. Sometimes it's league racing, sometimes it's kind of random casual events and stuff like that, but it's all good fun and we normally do okay we're normally relatively mid-pack so we've got some good scraps going on around so csl elite has been my mainstay wheelbase for a good amount of time i am about to think about potentially changing it but we shall see how we get along but the main thing i want to talk about with this uh, right here is something that i haven't really seen any videos done maybe because nobody's bothered by it but it's something that i thought was quite important because i went from originally having the standard csl wheel rim one moment this i went from having this which is a standard csl elite wheel rim i got it as part of the bundle when i bought the wheel itself and it was a really good starting point i enjoyed using it i didn't have any problems with it but one thing that kind of i guess it wasn't amazing for was the number of buttons and controls now that doesn't matter so much now because i've got a stream deck attached to my wheelbase but back when i first got it and I was using it on console as well. I'm now racing on PC, but back when I first got it, I didn't, yeah, I kind of struggled for a number of buttons and really, especially if you got into more, I guess, endurance races where you needed a few more options and stuff like that. It was a lot of kind of toggling and swiveling around. And also the major thing, the major, major thing missing from this, which everybody raves on about, and I can certainly see why when, with wheels that do have it, is the Fanatec funky switch. You've got a D-pad just here, which is fine, but it doesn't twist. And that is a loss of control that you'd be surprised how much of an impact it makes. So this is where I started. I then changed and switched and upgraded to this, the McLaren GT3 wheel. More options, more selections, more things to mess around with. Much better for endurance racing because there's more, uh, more toggles and switches and stuff like that on there. This has been pretty much... In fact, thinking about it, I probably used this for longer than I did that. And actually, I was on console for a good while as well. So I've had this for a good amount of time and it's been absolutely brilliant. And the main thing about this, which I think is quite important to note, is it's quite a light wheel. Considering what it's got, which has got two sets of paddles on the back, kind of clutch or accelerator and brake or whatever you want to kind of set up in an analog state there and then obviously your shifter paddles i do have the club sport um, quick release attached to it as well which does add a little bit of weight to it but generally overall it's a pretty light wheel and the torque output on the csl obviously is designed for these wheels these are csl wheels so what happens if we go to something that's a bit bigger and a bit chunkier and i'm not talking about the obviously incredibly well made formula v2 rims and stuff like that i'm not talking about those i'm talking about something like this this is the bmw gt2 club sport wheel so this is designed for the next tier up the next level up in terms of wheelbase a club sport wheelbase so again it's got the quick release on it as well but this is heavy this all this middle section here is pretty pretty solid metal there's a little bit of plastic on the back for kind of encasing like the electronics and stuff like that but this is pretty solid and it's quite heavy so what i want to see is does the extra weight from this bmw wheel and potentially guess other wheels out there that you might want to connect up to your base does it have a big effect because i have a feeling it's probably going to dampen out some of the force feedback feel and i've just got this wheel based really to where i like it so let's get into some Zeta Corsa and see how that plays out. So here we are. We are at WeatherTech Laguna Seca Raceway. If anyone knows what WeatherTech means or what they do, please tell me down in the comments because I've got I've still to this day got no idea. But it's a track I absolutely love. It's one that's got a hella hella bumps and opportunities to go off track and kind of see what the force feedback and stuff like that is going to be like through this we're going to start off with the mclaren wheel it's something i'm very used to so i guess it won't be anything that 
out of the obviously out of the ordinary for me but it might be quite a switch when we switch to the bmw it might be quite a change so let's kind of see how we get along i'm not bothered with a setup or anything kind of like that or whatever we're just gonna see how this goes um let's get into the race let's see how let's see how this feels got no tire pressure this is going to be absolute carnage but so i put out a video recently as well around my settings for using uh, this particular wheelbase but also the standard csl elite wheelbase with a set of course competizione so i mean already i can kind of feel what's going on underneath the wheels i can feel kind of the texture in the surface of the uh of the tarmac now that's because i have purposely increased some of the kind of road effects if that makes sense let's get going Green light. Give it a look here. so i am racing against ai not too bothered about finishing position oh, or anything like that but so already, yeah, like I, said, I can feel what's going on underneath the car for sure. Car and it seems to be translating itself really well into... I have to be really cautious with this AI. They're being really slow. I don't know what setting I've got them on. Car going on up the inside there. I'm having that. Clear on the left. We're having that. Car on the right. So running on the rumble strip there as well, I can literally feel every individual piece of the rumble. It all seems to translate really well through. Again, it's a light wheel. Got a bit of a rub there from the Lexus, which also I can feel pretty well. So this feels nice. Yeah, this is this is good. I also run wide there because I can feel kind of the tires scrubbing across the across the road as well. I'd like to pretend I ran wide on purpose to sort of kind of talk you through how it felt. But I could, you know, again, I could feel kind of, you know, it's not. I guess it's important to remember this is not obviously the most detailed wheel in the world uh, or wheelbase in the world. It's not, yeah, you know, it's belt driven. It's not quite direct drive level, but it is. It is good, and it's definitely a step up on the old G29 that I used to have. And I much prefer having the additional buttons, although it doesn't really matter for this, you know, 10 minute race. And it's also really quite important thing for me to say that the rotation feel is good as well because it's really quick oh gosh going side by side the AI there dread to think what my face looks like going around these corners put the outside of the sausage curb there as well I can feel a nice nice jolt through the wheel Come on, let's get this Audi. Oh, he's squeezing me against the wall. I had to break really early there, just in case the Ferrari looked like it was. I mean, this AI must be on a really low setting, but I never really get racing against the AI, to be fair. Correcting stuff feels okay as well. I can feel what's going on where I need to. Crossing over each kind of surface as well is good. I'm feeling the combo and light of the corkscrew as well is also good. Also translated really well. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Nice and ballsy there. feel what they need to do there to be able to correct it as well so all stuff I'm used to but I'm really interested to know now if it's going to be if it's going to be much different when we get onto the uh, BMW wheel oh dipped one on there dipped in uh, an outside wheel on the uh, gravel or the sand Sand, it just gets everywhere. At the bottom of the corkscrew as well, like where it 
really feels like the car's almost like firing around on its suspension and, and you know, its bump stops and stuff. It just feels feels good. Car on the right. I'm grabbing that. Clear on the right. Pushing wide. Slightly aggressive move, but. I've got a clear bit of air. A bit wide there. Oh, a bit wide there. Just caught it, but I tell you what, I can feel enough coming through the wheel to, <laughs> to know that I needed to catch it. I think it's a really well suited package. Really well suited. So let's see how different the big chungus wheel over there is going to be. We've now got the BMW wheel attached. The first thing for me that I noticed, other than the weight, no, the weight was the first thing I noted, noticed, and when the does like the calibration rotation and it stops on the end, when I had the McLaren wheel on, it stopped and it just kind of like clicked and like bumped itself to a stop. This was like a proper, like a, almost like a third away. <laughs> you can tell it's really solid. The second thing I've noticed is um, with the height I have my screen up and the size of this wheel, which I think is a little bit wider than the McLaren wheel, which is also wider than like the Formula wheels, is that it kind of sort of blocks some of my view a little bit. So, I mean, if we were going to stick with this, then I'd have to kind of mess around with that and possibly bring the uh, bring the monitor a little bit closer and put it a little bit higher or something along those lines. But that's the first thing I noticed. Um, it is big, it feels chunky, and the shifters, I don't know if you can hear this, but the shifters have got a much longer throw. And the McLaren, so my McLaren wheel is the version one wheel. I know they've improved it on the version two in terms of like a, having a little bit more travel and a little bit more of a clicking sensation. I actually don't mind the really minimal travel on my McLaren wheel. I, I don't mind it too much. This has got a really pronounced long throw and long click. It's probably, in fact, no, it's definitely longer than like the stock standard CSL Elite wheel, which I quite liked the length, but it wasn't very tactile. This is longer and more tactile, but it might be a little bit too long. I don't know. I guess we'll, I guess we're going to find out. I have got everything else set up exactly the same. So all the in-wheel settings and the in-game settings are identical to what they were to the McLaren. What I haven't done is set up the buttons on here. So I'm going to have to reach over to my keyboard and kind of start the car and stuff like that over here. But everything else is the same. So I guess let's get into it. I'm actually starting a little bit further back on the grid this time as well. But obviously that doesn't matter. But everything else is the same. The in-game temperature, track, everything like that, identical. Let's see how we get on. I'm really intrigued to know if the output force from the base with a much chunkier, heavier wheel is enough for it still to feel good. This is literally my first ever time trying this wheel rim. So I've got no idea what it's going to be like. Low tire pressure, stay away from curbs. No idea. And already that long throw on the that's going to take some getting used to the long throw on the paddles is really going to take some getting used to it does feel it feels really different really different i wanted to make this video because i just i haven't seen anybody else talk about it they talked about how like how the wheel performs you know different wheel rims perform and stuff like that but they haven't really compared back to back on different bases i don't think at least anyway so I wanted to try that because I think it's really important when you're picking the package that you're going to go for. And it's expensive gear, right? When you're picking the package that you're going to go for, you want to know what's going to suit your style and what's going to feel good for you. Okay, well, we've already gone green so far back because, because we're starting so far down the pack. Yeah, I think it's really important to, to think about this sort of stuff because you could just generically... Oh my God, I'm about to get out of it. Whoa, I'm about to get... Uh, well, I mean, we're just going to take that around the edge. The Didn't anticipate they'd slow down quite that much. So just running off the uh, road the there, it did translate well. I did get a good feeling through the wheel. It's hard to tell if it was, it was, it was quite left. as much as I would have got the from the McLaren wheel, but let's see. Car on the left. On the what right. I will say is, or which I can tell already, is because it is a heavier wheel, 
I guess. It's quite good for rotation. It almost feels like it's going to ro help me rotate it, if that makes sense. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how I should describe it, but it does feel pretty different. Really pronounced long throw shifters. We need to get in a bit of clear air so we can know what this feels like, I think. What I'm not feeling so far. Yeah, what I'm not feeling is tire scrub. Maybe I've not been in a position to quite feel it as much as I did because I've ran a little bit wide in a couple of corners when I uh, when I first tried this uh, the McLaren wheel on this track, but and we've not really had a clear run at anything yet, but. So, okay, so yeah, it's definitely coming through, but it just feels maybe a little bit more damped. That felt good over the over the uh, curve there, actually, though. And there again. And I had enough to know about the correction there as well, so... Yeah, it just, it, it is definitely different. Okay, that doesn't feel quite as pronounced running over the curve, for sure. And that's with identical settings now. I'm not entirely sure. I can feel kind of a bit of a brake lock up there, which is good. And I was confident going through the corkscrew. That felt good there. Yeah, the extra weight definitely feels like it helps you kind of rotate quite nicely. But I'm not... Yeah, I'm not sure... We're having that. Sorry, mate, we're having that. I wanted to also feel the curve a little bit extra there as well. I know I've not got things on the strongest forces or anything like that, but what I've done is I've set my wheel up so it doesn't have any clip in. But I still get plenty of feel. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Uh, oh my god, I had to bloody hell back out of that. I want to get a really nice clear run at the corkscrew. Car on the left. So I can see. On the left. Okay, no, I've got it there. You can feel where it goes. it's going light quite nicely. Tasty round here. Clear on the left. I don't even hear the the shifters because I've got. Oh, he went. Uh, he stuck his nose up there, the and I had to <laughs> the AI. Come on, Aston. Let's have you. We've got the climb up the hill. The power in the Bentley. Yeah, you can definitely feel it go light through there. But I'm definitely starting to draw some conclusions that hopefully will help people with their purchasing decision when they're thinking about when they're thinking about what they want to go for as a package. Because you can piece so many different things together and I think pretty much unless you go for the podium level Unless you go for the podium level kit, which has the, um, I don't mean the podium formula wheel because that will work on pretty much everything, but the podium, like a Porsche wheel for example, with all the extra buttons on which I love the look of by the way, I think it looks great and I'd love to have a thousand buttons all over the place, but except for that most stuff 
will work together. Most things will work together. Which means you can pull the trigger on, you know, varying levels of kit at different kind of price points. You can have the CSL, you have the, the formula, sorry, the, um, the club sport base. The club sport base, but with, you know, the McLaren CSL Elite racing wheel. Is that a good decision? Well, probably, but they really, but it's the, um, it's almost where you, when you go the other way, things being stepped up are normally okay, as long as you've got the right sort of quick release and stuff like that, works. like for example the McLaren wheel, if you've got the stock release system that comes on the McLaren wheel, it doesn't work with podium gear because the torque output, you know, the, the direct drive wheels and stuff like that, but it's just too, the torque output is just too high for the quick release system. I don't know if you see any panic in my eyes there when I nearly hit the back of that car. But stepping up's normally not too bad. It's when you it's when you've gotten kind of a mix of things up and down, and like where your I guess your your motor output, which is the base, is of a more entry level tier, which to be honest with you, no final tech gear is entry properly entry level. I don't think it's this is the most entry level kit uh, wheelbase they do, but it's still pretty expensive and it's still very good. But when you start mixing in stuff of a higher, you know, I guess a higher level, which is designed to work with stuff at a similar level first and foremost it might be compatible but it doesn't mean it's designed that way and that's the really important bit for me and what i wanted to do was see if see if there was going to be any downside to having a wheel rim that is made for a more expensive wheel base the formula ones the small, the compact, the smaller than the McLaren wheel, be, be, they are made out of, you know, better materials. But they're, because they are smaller and compact, they're not going to be, you know, much, much heavier. This is a significant weight increase. What I'm starting to think, I'll, be, I think I'll do some conclusions after the race, but what I'm starting to think is I don't think it's what I would pick, if I'm 100% honest. Speaking of BMWs, there's one in front of us. We're going to have him yeah, for the end. Oh, he covered it up. I'm going to have it. Oh, I'm having that switch back all day long, mate. Oh, so appropriate to overtake a BMW as the last car as we cross the line using the BMW wheel. Interesting, interesting. It's it definitely feels different, is what I'll say. It definitely feels different. It's interesting. I hope I kind of explain what I was trying to achieve throughout the video. It was it's really about helping with the purchase decision. For me, I leapt in with just the CSL Elite to start with, the standard CSL Elite wheel rim that we kind of already showed earlier in the video and Quite quickly, for me personally, that cape became not enough for the type of driving I was doing and the fact that I was going to start getting into endurance races and things like that. That quite quickly became apparent. It was then about what level do you go to next? So at the time when I bought my McLaren wheel, the, the V2 didn't exist. Um, in fact, really annoying for me, it came out like two months after I bought mine, but whatever. It, it was... It was basically about what do I go to next? Do I go to the McLaren wheel and get one kind of like, you know, used or something like that, but it gives me the opportunity to have a formula style wheel with a little bit of a wider grip because like I said, I've, I've used the other formula wheels, the more compact one. And for me, it's just a little bit, I don't know. It just feels like I'm constantly doing that to try and drive it. And it just, it just didn't feel great. So that made sense to me, and that's ultimately the reason why I went for it, plus the fact that I needed the additional buttons and stuff like that. Do you miss out on not 
by having a formless style wheel on not having the versatility 100 you absolutely do the reason why i kept the original csl elite wheel rim is because i needed the versatility in case i ever did something like dirt rally or something along those lines so it's really important to remember that as well that whatever you buy and whatever you go for is going to fit with all the different kind of applications you want to use it for that's important to remember hence why i kept the original one and i didn't sell it or something like that Okay, so in terms of the, the main bit for me with this one was the, kind of the level aspect because the BMW wheel obviously ticks the box of having a almost round wheel because it's sat kind of semi-flat bottomed, almost round wheel uh, with additional buttons. It's more premium. It feels better. The shifters are miles better. Yes, you go back to because the McLaren wheel has got the better kind of led screen here it's got more information on it but what it doesn't have is rev lights but you got rev lights on the base unit anyway but yeah whatever so there's kind of a much and much is there plenty of extra buttons you've got the fanatec funky switch as well which is really important for multiple uses can't stress that enough so it ticked you know some boxes there but then the extra weight was always a question mark the moment i mean the moment i picked it up, i was really impressed with how it looked and how it felt but the first thought that went through my mind was, what's it going to feel like on a wheelbase that is of a kind of, I guess, a, a lower caliber? And I think my conclusion, to be honest, is if you've got a CSL Elite wheelbase, I don't think I'd go for this. I think there's other options out there. The McLaren V2 wheel is back. I know it's not round, but this for me it, it did dampen out some of the force feedback feeling you can dial it up on the wheelbase absolutely but i guess i've got into a position for me with the particular setup that i've got where i get loads and loads of really tactile feel through without needing to crank anything and i feel like i'd have to crank a few more things up on this which isn't the end of the world but it's all a balancing act. I don't want to feel like I'm wrestling, you know, absolutely wrestling the car left, right, and centre all the time. Yeah, absolutely. When you almost went off a couple of times in kind of the, in the driving we were just doing, absolutely from time to time you'll wrestle the car, but not. I don't want to feel like it's a proper sort of strain to to get the car around the track all the time. And I've got that into good position. So I think for me on this, it's not what I pick. It is very good. And no, and I think if, if, if it's all you'd experience and you plug this in straight away and you bought the base and you bought this, you would be really happy with it. Because I've had experience of something else with this base that I think is just a bit more appropriate, that's the one I go for. So for me, the victor in this particular scenario is the McLaren wheel. It is different, obviously, it's a different form factor, but the lightness of it, which I guess you could argue the cheapness of it or the slightly cheaper construction of it um, actually is just more fitting, to be honest with you. I hope it's helpful. I really hope this kind of helps people decide on what they're going to go for and what they might choose in terms of their own setup because it's, it can be a minefield out there. That's just my decision. See what you think. Hopefully that's helpful. Thank you for watching ECTV. Hopefully you like that. Please subscribe to the channel if you are new and if you wish to press the bell icon as well, that'd be awesome because we stream league racing and casual stuff and bits and bobs like that throughout the week as well as kind of get information videos like this. It'd be awesome if you did that. Much appreciated. Thanks for watching and I hope that helped. See you in the next one. Choose and pick the best one. Get it on now. Five, four, three, two, one. Get it on now. Select and make your first pick. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Get it on now.